In this video, we will talk about the most common questions panelists ask during oral defense. Pero bago yan, intro muna tayo. Greetings fellow life forms! Kumusta kayo? I am Sir Gerald, a senior high school STEM teacher from Rizal, Philippines. Welcome to my channel, Science Sensei TV, and don't forget to subscribe for more science, research, and other educational videos. Two years ago, kumalat ang slogan na ito over the internet. Sabi dyan, akads before lakads, readings before feelings, laude bago landi, at jiwa or uh, general weighted average bago jowa. Kaya eto ako ngayon, tutulungan kayong i-ace o paghandaan ang isa sa mga pinaka-highlight ng inyong academic life, ang research defense. Para pagkatapos na ito, pwede nyo nang uh, asikasuhin ang feelings nyo. Okay? Sige. Simula natin sa mga katanungan sa chapter 1. In few sentences, can you tell us what your study is all about? No? Parang ang dali lang ng tanong, no? Pero mind you, kapag ganito ang unang bungad na tanong sa mga researchers, uh, na nagugulat sila. So, nakakagulat na nagugulat sila. Kasi parang study nila yun, tapos unang tanong pa lang, nahirapan na silang sagutin. Okay? So, yung tanong ay simple, pero it's technical. At para masagot mo ang tanong na to, kailangan alam mo ang iyong study from the first chapter up to the last chapter. Ang tanong na to ay pwede ring masagot in a form of summary of study. So kapag familiar ka sa abstract ng, ng iyong uh, research, madali lang yung uh, tanong na ito para sa'yo. Sunod, why did you conduct this study? Madami nakakabit na related questions dito. No? Related siya sa mga tanong na, what is your motivation to conduct this study? Why did you choose this topic? Or what, what is the research problem? Halos pare-pareho yung mga yan. Now, you must be careful here kasi Yung question ay very tricky and pwede siyang gamitin ng panel para makita kung may sense yung study nyo. Okay? Pag tinanong kayo ng panel na uh, ganyan, why did you conduct this study, huwag nyo namang sabihin na kasi sabi nyo po nung nag-title defense kami. No? <laughs> or para po makagraduate, no? lagot tayo dyan. Well, to answer this question, you may decide to elaborate on the problem investigation, uh, investigated in the study. Ano nga ba ang problema na gusto mong lutasin? Kunin mo yung rational ng study nyo and bakit in the first place of all the topics, bakit ito yung napili nyo? Okay? So, ayan. Pangatlo, what current issues and problems led you in conducting this study? So, maganda tong tanong na to kasi it will highlight the need for your study. May current issue ka bang nilutas or may present problem ka bang naisolusyonan? Magandang ma-highlight ito sa panel para makita nila ang relevance ng study nyo sa needs ng society. This will further strengthen the quality of research problem that you have. Okay? Next. What research or knowledge gap did you address in your study? So, sa experience ko bilang research teacher and bilang panelist, marami pa rin ang nalilito kung ano yung research gap or knowledge gap. Ang research gap ay question or problem na hindi na sasagot ng mga existing studies. Minsan, merong research gap kapag may mga bagong ideya talaga na hindi pa napag-aaralan, no? Pwede ka ring makakita ng research gap kapag for example, may isang population na di masyadong na bibigyan ng study. For example, sobrang dami na ng study about video games and teenagers pero kukonte or halos wala pa siguro ng study about video games and toddlers. So, Pwedeng research gap yon And uh, pwedeng, pwede rin i-consider na research gap or knowledge gap yung uh, sobrang outdated na mga studies. For example, may nakita kang study about internet in 1990s. So kapag nagganda kulit kayo ng study ngayong 2021, ayan, pwedeng uh, naka-address kayo ng research gap. Okay? So kailangan mong makumbinsi ang panel na yung study mo ngayon ay di pa masyadong nagagawa ng iba pang researchers. Okay? Yan. Next. Uh, what are your research variables? Now, this quest question is a sort of warning to all researchers. 
minsan kasi hirap tayo i-identify kung ano-ano yung variable sa study natin, di ba? Kailangan mo ma-identify for example, ano ang independent and dependent variable sa study mo kung yan man ay experimental or descriptive. Ano yung intervening variables kung uh, meron man kasi minsan uh, yung intervening variables baka yun talaga ang nagkukos ng change para magbago or mag-iba ang dependent variable, no? Hindi yung independent variable. So, may problema doon. Kailangan mo siyang i-address. Marami tayong klase ng variables. Sa correlational studies, meron tayong predictive and outcome variables. Sa types of data naman, meron tayong categorical and quantitative. So, sa tanong na ito, dapat ipakita mo sa panel na confident ka sa sagot mo at alam mo yung mga sinasabi mo, di ba? Kasi mahirap naman na sobrang confident ka sa mga sinasabi mo tapos mali pala, di ba? So dapat pag-aralan mo talaga siyang mabuti at i-research mo nang gusto ang iyong study. Okay? Next. What limitations did you encounter in your study? And simple ang tanong pero medyo tricky rin 'yan. Kaya dapat mag-iingat tayo pag yan yung tanong ng panel. Bakit? Most of the time na itatanong yan ng panel para makita nila kung ano yung kahinaan ng study. Now, to answer this question, payong kaibigan lang, huwag kang mag-focus uh, doon sa methodology at sa data analysis. No, kapag ano, although siguro may mga limitations tayo doon, huwag doon ang focus ng sagot natin. Uh, siguro doon sa mga simpleng limitations lang ang bigay natin sagot. For example, difficulties in getting local literature, ayan, pwede yan. Ngayon, pag binusisi ng panel yung tungkol sa mas malalim na loophole ng inyong study ay lagot tayo dyan. So, sasabihin na natin ang uh, talagang limitations, okay? Pero hanggat hindi nila inuungkat, uh, wag mo nang sabihin yung mga limitations, especially about sa methodology and sa um, data analysis. Kasi baka ang lumabas, uh, Baka mamali ka ng sabi, ang lumabas ay parang hindi mo na-research ng gusto ang study mo. Or baka magkaroon ka ng bias findings kasi nga uh, may limitations dun sa data analysis. Something like that. Okay? Next. Where did you get your research framework? Is it your own? Why this framework? This is very technical question but interesting. Bago ka pumunta sa virtual defense room, dapat may alam ka na dalawa or tatlong relevant issues or theories na konektado sa study mo. Kapag sa palagay mo na exhaust mo na lahat ng kailangan mong gawin, lahat ng resources mo, and wala ka pang nakikitang uh, research uh, uh, theories na related sa study mo, pwede ka nang humingi ng tulong sa iyong research advisor. Again, this question will give the panel an impression that you did an extensive reading. No, Minsan, maganda yon na, na may mga researchers na nag introduce ng, alam nyo yun, mga theories na hindi masyadong familiar ang panel. No? Oh, may ganun palang theory and nanggaling yun sa mga um, researchers. Good point yun kasi ma-realize ng panel na ah, nagbasa ito ng husto. Talagang nag-research ito at uh, pinag-aralan ng mabuti ang kanyang study. Okay? And that again merits a good solid point sa study nyo. Okay? So, yun yung mga questions sa chapter 1. Chapter 2. How did you obtain the local literature on this topic? Yan. Aminado, aminado tayo na medyo mahirap talaga maghanap ng local literature. No? Para makadagdag sa part na ito, siguro magsaman rin tayo ng related local readings at related local studies para lumawig ang inyong local literature. Magkakaisa, magkakaiba kasi yan. Yung RL, RS, at RR. Sa related literature... Ito ay yung mga books, journals, magazines, articles. No? Sa related studies, ito yung mga published and uh, unpublished research studies, kagaya ng dissertation and thesis. Sa related readings naman, ito yung mga laws and directives such as orders, memoranda, and circular. So, kapag yan ay nailagay mo, bukod lang dun sa mga literature, na ano involved, kapag naidagdag mo yung mga yan, siguro naman medyo madami na ang, or madami ka na makukuha sa iyong uh, local literature. Okay? Next. Ayan. What sampling 
technique did you use in your study? Chapter 3 na tayo, okay? It's the same with the question na how did you choose your respondents, okay? When you conduct research about a group of people, it's really possible to collect data from every person in that group, no? Kaya tayo pumipili ng sample. The sample is a group of individuals who will actually participate in your research. Now, gumagamit tayo ng sample kasi alam natin na sample are easier to collect data from because they are practical, cost-effective, convenient, and manageable. No? Gusto rin makita ng panel na di nagkaroon ng sampling bias sa study mo. Ano nga ba yung sampling bias? Ito yung instances kapag yung ibang members ng population ay mas malaki yung chance na mapili para maging sample. Okay? So, dito, medyo may problema tayo kapag may sampling bias kasi nalilimit nalilimitahan yung generalizability ng findings. Maaaring lumabas na yung findings ay galing sa bias samples. And pwede lang siyang magamit dun sa mga sample na may parehong karakteristik. So, hindi, hindi malaki yung generalizability ng findings. Problema yon So, anong dapat gawin para malesen yung uh, sampling bias? Gamit tayo ng probability sampling. No? Mas mataas kasi yung... Uh, Sampling bias sa mga non-probability sampling like convenience sampling or purposive sampling. No? Hanggat maaari kung kakayanin ng study, gamit tayo ng uh, random sampling or simple random sampling, yung mga ganyan na probability sampling talaga. Okay? Next. Chapter 3 ulit. Why did you use this research methodology? Yan. Dito, hindi sapat na explain mo lang yung particular method na ginamit mo sa study. Ano ba ginamit mo? Descriptive, experimental ba, historical, case study, or correlational? Now, after ma-explain ang methodology, dapat ma-justify mo bakit ito yung most applicable na gamiting method. Paano mas magiging convincing na tama ang ginamit mong method? Although it entails a lot of reading, no? Pwede kang mag-quote ng similar studies in the past na gumamit ng parehong methodology or method. With that, mas may strengthen mo yung claim mo na you are using correct methodology. Okay? Next. Ayan. How did you deal with the eth uh, ethical implications of your study? Medyo uh, sa napapansin ko na babaliwala yung ethical issues and considerations sa study kapag may mga humaharap sa aking uh, bata for defense. No? So in the research stage, the ethical norm requires that it aims to be uh, or it aims to promote human well-being. Yan dapat talagang focus. Uh, dapat laging pinopromote niya ang well-being ng isang tao. May tatlong pillars yan non maleficence or hindi ka gagawa ng masama sa kapwa beneficence or doing good to your to others to to your respondents and justice or giving others what is due them no so uh, kapag yan ay mga na-address mo so pwede ka nang lumusot diyan sa implications of your study no i-address mo yang beneficence non maleficence and justice okay Okay. So chap yung chapter 4 um yan yung medyo uh, madugo kapag uh, chinek ng ating panel pero uh, hindi natin siya may present dito dahil um case to case basis ang ang uh, resu resulta di ba iba-iba naman kasi ang resulta ng bawat study so uh, mahirap siyang gawan ng question so we move on to the last chapter chapter 5 what is fresh in your study Gusto kong tinatanong to sa mga researchers kasi medyo overwhelmed na tayo sa sobrang dami ng researches, no? Halos pare-pareho na. So, gusto ko na makakarinig ng may bago dun sa research kasi nakakagana yan, no? Nakaka-excite. Kaya, pag tinanong kayo ng panel, anong bago dyan sa research nyo, galingan nyo ng sagot, no? Parang i-advertise nyo ng gusto yung inyong study. Ano ba ino offer ng research nyo? Bagong material ba? Bagong idea? Bagong instrument? Bagong procedure, innovation ba yan? So, ayan, yun yung mga pwedeng i-offer ng um, inyong study at dapat fresh yun, okay? Next, how would you relate your findings to existing theories on the study? Now, to ace this question, you have to read extensively kasi your ability to link 
your findings to previous research studies, no? Uh, ay makakapag-validate ng gusto ng inyong study. At uh, maniwala kayo na good point ito para sa inyong study. No? If you wanted me to make another videos featuring common theories used in research, you may leave a comment after, after the video. Okay? Yeah, next. Ayan. If you were to explain your research findings to an 8-year-old child, what would you tell him or her? Now, it is well accepted in academic community that if you have or if you could explain a certain concept to an eight-year-old child, that could show that you have a thorough understanding of your topic. No? Ibig sabihin, dapat malinaw at simple ang pagkakalahad mo ng resulta. Well, mas okay kung lahat ng parts ay ganito ang ay, yung ginagawa, no? ganito ang yung style. Clear and concise yung pagkakalahad mo ng uh, konsepto. Kailangan mong i-link ang resulta mo sa mga pr sa problem na gusto mong sagutin. That way, mas madaling makikita ng panel na nasagot mo nga yung research problem mo na prinisent sa chapter 1. Okay, next. Based on your findings, what are your recommendations? Yan. Recommendations. Sobrang essential niyan sa isang research. Kasi ito yung pwedeng starting point ng mga future researchers. Dapat mailatag mo ng maayos ang iyong recommendations at dapat relevant siya sa iyong findings at conclusions. Chicheck kasi yan ng panel na dapat yung recommendations mo ay nanggaling or may pinaghugutan doon sa findings at sa conclusion. No? Hindi pwedeng gumawa ka lang ng basta ng recommendation ng walang pinagkukunang basehan. Okay? So, yung mga following question ay tungkol sa uh, remote learning. No? Yung effect ng uh, study ng remote learning dun sa study nyo. No? How did the current setup or remote learning, distance learning, affect your study as a whole? So, to answer this question, uh, it may vary from study to study. No? Pero pwede mo siyang sagutin na dun sa mga limitations na encounter mo due to remote learning. No? For example, basic na yung medyo hirap kayo sa communication kasi nga yun, uh, nasa distance learning tayo. Pero pwede mo rin siguro i-highlight na despite the remote learning setup, natapos nyo yung study. And I think that merits good points. Kasi alam natin na ang sitwasyon natin ng emergency remote learning ay uh, medyo mahirap talaga. The fact na nakatapos ka ng research na ganito ang setup, sinicelebrate dapat yon, Okay? Yan. Pwede yun ang i-highlight mo. Next. If this study was conducted in a face-to-face -face setup, would it still be the same? Why or why not? Dapat mo rin paghandaan yung ganitong tanong. Ano nga ba ang pwedeng magbago kapag ang study mo ay nai-conduct ng face-to-face? Meron ba? Meron or wala? Ayan. So, pwede mo rin nga pag-aralan yan yung mga posibleng sagot sa tanong na yan. So, ito ay yung mga pwede pang katanungan na maaaring maitanong ng panel. No? Basahin lang natin mabilis, hindi na natin na-explain. What surprises did you find in your study? What was the most challenging aspect of your research? What specific aspects of your findings can be taken to practice? How generalizable is your study? Is there an alternative interpretation of your findings? Will your research change current thinking in the field? If so, how? What will you do personally with the findings to make a difference? What advice would you give a student who is starting the research process and considering using the methodology you used? How did your coursework at the school prepare you for your research work? And what is your next research problem or project? So, yan yung mga posibleng matanong ba na pwede nating paghandaan in case. Okay? Payang kaibigan lang para sa inyong oral defense, ingatan, huwag ibagsak. Okay? So, shout out kina Dr. Marinel Andres, GDS Lava, Joel Fernandez, Gian Rabago, and Carl Marx Teranya sa pag-participate sa crowdsource, uh, crowdsourcing ko kahapon. Lots of love, guys. Okay? So this year, this is your friendly science and say and for more science research teacher essentials and other educational videos please visit my channel science sensei tv and don't forget to subscribe you may also leave comments kung anong topic sa research ang gusto niyo gawan ko ng video okay thank you so much